magic with Renee. Hi everyone! So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Renee and I am here today to do a little bit of music and a little bit of magic with you. Our magic trick today is actually about disappearing and we're going to make something very, very cool disappear, but you'll find out later. And then we're going to learn a really nice song that hopefully we'll all be able to sing at the end together. So we're going to do a little bit of music and a little bit of magic. So why don't we get started? Before we can do any type of singing or any type of magic or presenting, we need to make sure that we warm up our faces and our bodies and our voices. So the first thing that we are going to do to warm up our faces is our lion faces and our lemon faces. So if you don't know this one, it goes our lion faces are nice and big, eyes and mouths open, we're super silent lion lies. And then our lemon faces are like we just ate a very sour lemon and our face is so small and lemony. So we go lemon face and a little lion face. And one more lemon face. And one final lion face. So our faces are all nice and stretched out. Our next warm up to warm up our voices a little bit, we are going to pretend that a buzzing bee has flown into our house. So we're going to make our buzzing sounds that a bee make. We're going buzz. Now he's a very silly bee, so sometimes our buzzing bee is going to fly a little lower. And he's going to sound like this. And sometimes, because this bee is so, so silly, he's going to fly a little bit higher. So maybe he goes until our bee is so tired that he has to take a break. For our final warm up, we are going to use our bodies a little bit more. So we're going to make sure that we're standing up and we are going to find something that we think is really funny. So for me, I'm going to use this dog because I think he is so funny. So I'm standing up and I have my thing that is funny and I'm going to put my hand right on my belly here and I'm going to laugh at my dog. And I'm going to laugh really, really low starting off. And my laugh's going to sound like ho, 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 ho. And when I laugh, I should be able to feel my belly moving. So I'm finding my thing that's funny and I'm going ho, 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 because of how funny it is. Can you feel your belly moving there? Good. Next, we're gonna find something that's even funnier. And so for this, I am going to use this cup. It's a really funny cup, so I'm going to laugh at it and I'm going to go ha, 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 ha. Again, I'm seeing my belly go ha, 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 ha. And how funny this cup is. I need you to find something that is the funniest thing you can think of. The absolute funniest thing. And I am going to use this pair of scissors. Look how funny this pair of scissors is, okay? This is a really, really funny laugh. So my belly's gonna move a lot and it's gonna be really high pitched and it's going to go hee 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 One last time with our bellies really moving. Good job. Now that we've warmed up our faces and our voices and our bodies a little bit, we're going to get into doing a little bit of music and a little bit of magic. So all that we're going to need for our trick today is a piece of tin foil. So as you can see, mine is very crumply. You're going to need it to be a decent size. You'll see exactly how big once you see how the trick works out. If we don't have tin foil in our house, you can also do this trick even with just a normal piece of paper or a normal piece of construction paper. I just find tin foil helps me a lot and it can sometimes be easier for smaller hands to do. We are also going to be needing a clear cup. So my cup here is a glass cup, but if you're doing this at home, you may want to try it with a plastic cup or maybe ask your parents what type of um, kids safe cups do I have at home that are see-through and maybe if they fall it won't be that big a deal. 
We just need to make sure that we can see through our cup. The final thing we need is the object that we are going to make disappear. So for this, we just need something that is small and flat. And what I chose for today is this little picture of a dog. He is so cute. But you can use a coin, you can use a small piece of paper, you can use a button. All we need is something that is small and something that is flat that can go on our table. That's the other thing. We do need to do this trick on a table. So we can't do this trick on the ground, unfortunately. We do need to make sure that we have a hard, flat surface for us to sit behind in order to do this trick. So let's get started. Like always, we're gonna start by me showing you the magic trick. I will be doing the magic for you. And then we will go into learning how the trick is done and what the magic is behind the trick. So I have with me a ordinary piece of tin foil, nothing special about it, my ordinary cup, and just my plain old ordinary little doggy on a piece of paper. And in today's trick, I'm going to make this little doggy disappear. I'm going to start by trapping him underneath this cup. He's trapped. We can all confirm my doggy is trapped under my cup. I'm going to take my normal tin foil and I'm going to cover up my doggy. All right, and now I might need your help with this, but I'm going to say, doggy, doggy, disappear, okay? I'm holding it nice and tight. I'm gonna go, doggy, doggy, disappear. Oh no, I think I might have messed up my trick a little bit. My doggy's still here. Okay, well, I'll try again, and maybe I wasn't thinking very hard enough. So I'll put my cup back on my doggy. I'll hold it nice and tight, and I'll go again. Doggy, doggy, disappear. Oh my goodness, I think I did the trick wrong. My doggy's still here, but I accidentally made the cup disappear. So as I'm sure you can tell, the magic of this trick is not actually about making my doggy disappear. It is about making the even more challenging and even more complicated cup disappear. So we call that the art of misdirection. And what that's doing is we're distracting our audience by making them think we're trying to do one thing when in fact we're actually doing another thing. So let's take a look at how this whole magic trick works and how we can make our cup disappear, but maybe not our dog. So the first thing we have to do is we have to introduce all our, our props to our audience. So we have our dog or our little coin or our little picture or even our little piece of paper. And we're going to put it underneath our cup. Now this here is the very important part. I'm going to take my tin foil or construction paper, if that's the only thing you could find. Tin foil tends to make this a little bit easier, especially for smaller hands sometimes. And we're going to put our tin foil or our moldable material over top of our cup and we're going to squeeze it down so that it covers the whole thing up. That's super important. So we're going to make sure we're going to adjust it so that it covers the whole thing up. All right. And once it's covered, this is when we can begin actually doing our trick. So we can turn our cup around, our doggy's still under there, everything's still happening. Now this part here is our first go, and we're gonna take our first try and tell our audience, oh no, my doggy's still here. Now while I'm showing my audience that my doggy's still here, I have my cup inside my tin foil in my other hand. And with this cup in the tin foil, in my hand, I'm going to take it and I'm placing it on my lap. So I'm sliding my cup out of my tin foil just like this. And I just did that on my lap. So it was under the table and you couldn't see it. So I'm saying, oh my goodness, my doggy is still here. And as you can see, when I bring my tin foil back, the cup's already gone. So I'm now making sure that my tin foil is keeping its shape. I'm putting the tin foil back over my object. 
so it still looks like I have a cup here. I can tap on the top, I can say, oh my goodness, I forgot my magic words, any of those things, because now we've really tricked our audiences. All right, now this is our second go, and our cup is sitting in our lap right now. All right, we've already gotten rid of the cup. We're gonna go again, and this time we're holding our tin foil so that it looks like our cup is still here. And we're going, doggy, doggy, disappear. And now this time is when we can do our big dramatic finish, where we say, oh no, instead of making the doggy disappear, I made, and we can do a big smack, the cup disappear. And it's that big dramatic gesture at the end that makes it really exciting and really interesting for our audience to watch. Now that we've done a little bit of disappearing doggy magic, we are going to learn a super awesome song about wanting to have a dog. I know I have a dog and I love my dog very much. So the song we are going to learn today for our music is called, How Much Is That Doggy In The Window? So to start off our Doggy In The Window song, our very first line is actually going to be, how much is that doggy in the window? So we see a doggy in the window and we're asking, how much does that doggy cost? So we're going to try singing that line and that first line is going to sound a little bit like this. How much is that doggy in the window? Good job. Our next line is the one with the waggly tail. So I'm sure you've seen a doggy with a waggly tail before. So this doggy has a very waggly tail. So we are going to sing it like this. The one with the waggly tail. Good. The next part of our song, we're actually going to repeat our first line. So we're going to ask once again, how much is that doggy in the window? All right, so we're singing it just like we sang our first line and we're saying, how much is that doggy in the window? Really good job. Our final line for our chorus of this song is, I do hope that doggy's for sale. So we've said, how much is that doggy in the window? The one with the waggly tail. How much is that doggy in the window? I do hope that he is for sale. Now to sing our last line, we're going to sing it like this. I do hope that doggy's for sale. So if we wanted to sing our whole chorus all together, it would sound a little bit like this. How much is that doggy in the window? The one with the waggly tail. How much is that doggy in the window? I do hope that doggies for sale. And just like that, we've learned our entire chorus to our song. So we're gonna try and take a look at our whole song with all the verses. And every time that our chorus comes up, I want you to try and see if you can sing along now that you've learned all of the words to our chorus. How much is that doggy in the window? The one with the waggly tail. How much is that doggy in the window? I do hope that doggy's for sale. I must take a trip over to London and leave my dog he won't be 
Renee. 